Hey folks, how's it going? So before I get into today's topic, please do consider subscribing and liking and sharing the video. It really does help us out and it doesn't cost you anything. Also, if you like audio gear, if you like how to improve your music, if you would like to know more about speakers, uh, reviews, then this is what we do on this channel. So please do consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. Now without further ado, getting to today's topic, this is the Billy Amp from Heaven 11. Now this is a very interesting uh, little amplifier here because it's basically an all-in-one integrated amplifier. So it has a DAC section, which is a Sabre DAC um, that they're using in here, which is a pre pretty decent DAC. And it also has a headphone section. It also has a Bluetooth connectivity through aptX, which is a lossless kind of format. So you can uh, basically stream and uh, do things on your phone, uh, on your TV, and connect it through Bluetooth to this unit right here. Um, and then it also has a phono section, which sounds pretty decent. It has a moving magnet phono section for turntables. So if you're kind of like an old fashioned person or if you do really like analog, then you can certainly hook up your turntable to this uh, as part of your one all in one solution. Now it has a uh, tube preamp section, which makes the sound quite unique. Um, and this preamp tube section is actually designed by an engineer by the name of Denis Rosan. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty much butchering that name, but he is the uh, uh, senior engineer at Tenor Audio. And so he has designed very high and very expensive tube gears in his past um, projects. And he has designed the preamp section for this Billy amp right here, which is quite reassuring. Now the class D amplification, the wireless section and all that is designed by someone who is pretty reputable in the uh, pro audio industry. He's the engineer behind it and his name is uh, Sivan Savar. Um, pretty much butchering, butch butchering that name as well, but I'm really bad with these kind of names. And um, uh, quite frankly, I live in Canada, but I don't speak French. So there's that. <laughs> One new fact you know about me now. Anyways, um, getting back to this, the class D amp section is actually a using a um, ice module. So this ice module is used in PS Audio, Parasound, and a lot of the reputable companies out there. It's one of the best um, ice, you know, class D modules out there that can be used in an amplifier. And here it's being used on the Billy amp as well. So let's take a look at some of the functionalities and how things are done with this integrated amplifier. So there's a switch on the back, you turn it on and you start turning the knob and the amp will start to warm up and you will see the tubes blink. This takes quite a bit of time so it's the time it takes for this amplifier to warm up. Now this part here, the, the volume knob, uh, is quite interesting. It's made out of uh, wood and it's, it's very nice. I, I love the feel of this wood, it's very retro. Um, this part, the flat part, is basically where you have your volume set to. So it doesn't have any kind of numbers or anything like that, but you just turn until you are at a very comfortable volume and you go, can go all the way around to 11 o'clock. One thing is that there is no remote control for this. So currently there is no remote control for this, but the good news is that um, Itai, the CEO of Heaven 11, has reassured me that they are coming up with a remote control. So that is being solved very, very shortly. And we are hoping to see that soon. Now, the next thing that I have a little bit of problem here is that um, all these controls are done, all the inputs and outputs are chosen with this little knob here. And uh, none of these marks um, really have any type of uh, sign on which input you're in. So you have to kind of guess or you kind of have to memorize um, which input you're in, which I really didn't have much problems with, but I do feel that some people uh, may have a little bit of an issue with this. Um, especially if, you, if, you, if they want to move back and forth between uh, connections really fast, then this can become a bit of a problem. Now I'm gonna go quickly over the 3.5 millimeter section here for the headphones. Uh, it comes with a 
3.5 to a quarter inch adapter as well for headphones, uh, headphone lovers out there. It can drive most headphones. I had a plenty of you know power and uh, really finesse with HD 600s, 650s uh, from Sennheiser. I really liked it even with the HD 800. The only thing is that you can't drive really demanding headphones like the Sen uh, like the Hi Fireman HD 6 or anything like that. But for most headphones out there, it was quite quite enjoyable. Um, especially with the LC2, a lot of layering, uh, very, very great sound out of this uh, little headphone section here. Now, moving on to the back, what we have here is a very nice speaker binding post. Um, they, I mean, they could have bought and used really a uh, pretty cheap alternative to this. They could have used like plastic or anything like that, but this is pretty darn a uh, nice binding post. I don't know if this is brass or anything like that, but it's it's metal and um, it's it's quite nice. It, it's it feels like quality, and I really didn't have uh, much problem connecting big spades or small spades or bananas or anything like that. Uh, it connects quite well uh, and tight. Um, you know, on cheap products, once in a while you will have problems actually making the spades, especially if they're a little bit big, actually stay. Um, on this one, I didn't have any problems like that. Now they have a line out here and you can use this for subwoofers so you can integrate a subwoofer with this. You can also use it for your powered monitors. Now getting into the aux input, we have two aux inputs. So this is basically analog inputs. So you can input from your DAC, uh, from your streamer if you have one. Uh, you can input basically anything into this analog section to feed the Billy amplifier. Now here we have the vinyl section, so we have the uh, left and the right and the ground, and really performs quite nicely. Not a lot of um, integrated amplifiers will have a phone section that sounds this good. It really has kind of like a low noise floor. I really like that, and it's quite quite intuitive. It's 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 easy to use, it's, it sounds really good. I mean, is it gonna be better than a separate phone stage that costs $2,000? No, it's not going to be. Is it going to be as quiet? No, it's not going to be, but for a moving magnet cartridge, let's say you have a project turntable or, or a, a old vintage turntable with a um, 2M Red uh, from Orophon, that's, that's pretty much what this is for. It's gonna sound darn great with a, with a setup like that. Now, on this, we have a uh, little uh, micro USB, I think. And this is, I haven't used it, but this is what you use for updating. So it's really good to note that, you know, you can actually update this unit if you choose to. So there you have it. That's basically what the Billy Amp is. Uh, now let's talk about what the Billy Amp is all about in terms of sound quality. So let's start from the bass region and up. So the bass on the Billy Amp is going to be quite, quite good. It's a Class D amplifier, but what it does differently from other Class D amplifiers is that it's, going, it's not going to emphasize the bass too much. So other Class D amplifiers, I found that they kind of try to try too hard to kind of bring out the bass. So especially in a hybrid design, they will try to emphasize the mid bass region just to show off hey, it's a hybrid design, but it has a lot of bass. It doesn't do that here. Um, here, you're gonna get a relatively fast bass that is relatively um, you know, quick and well-controlled. That's what the Billy does. It doesn't try to be anything else other than itself. It is a very well-controlled, tight, yet sweet bass. Um, the damping factor is 500. And it's not listed on the spec currently, but I asked um, the, the founder of Heaven 11, Itai, and he told me the damping factor is 500. I mean, that is pretty darn high for a amplifier. And, you know, considering that some class D amplifiers have, you know, a damping factor of around 200 and 300, 500 is considerably high. This means that it's going to control most woofers without a much problem. So when I pair this up to something like the Picard S400 or even um, other speakers with pretty dynamic uh, capabilities like Kefar 3 for example, it performed quite well. The bottom end was really, really quick um, um, and really, really dynamic, really, really snappy, but it didn't feel like it was 
excessive. There was not a lot of excessiveness to it. So if you are in a large room and you have a pair of Kevlar 3s, for example, with this, you're not gonna get a lot of bass, but you're gonna get a very controlled, very quick, very tight bass. Now, this was very apparent on tracks like Flight of the Cosmic Hippo and The Limit to Your Love by James Blake. Now, I suggest you try both of these tracks on the Billy amplifier or on your system and you will understand what I'm trying to talk about. The Limit to Your Love track has two distinctive bass notes. It goes down very low, um, but there is, if you listen carefully, there's two different distinctive bass notes. Now, if you can't hear this on your system on, or on your phone, that is because your phone and your system does not, is not capable of producing those two bass notes. With the Billy amplifier, you're gonna get that two bass note, but not only are you gonna get those two bass notes, you're gonna get it very distinctive, distinct, uh, distinctive uh, bass notes. So with some Class D or hybrid designs that are poorly designed, you may find that the two distinctive bass notes are not too distinct. Like they may feel like, you know, one is, like you may be able to tell there's two bass notes, but you're not gonna know when it finishes, when the other one starts, as well as when you're connected to the Billy amplifier. So the Billy amplifier, you're able to tell that no problem. Uh, I could tell it like, like this. I could tell it no problem uh, whatsoever. So that is what you're gonna get, a lot of control, a lot of snappy bass uh, without much you know, problems with that kind of uh, poorly designed hybrid kind of sound. Now mind you, this is designed in Canada, all handmade, it's not made in China, so this is not a mass produced kind of you know, product. So here you're gonna get a lot of quality, a lot of soul has went into this. I mean, three people went into designing this integrated amplifier. Uh, you know, Two engineers and one industry designer being Itai. So three people, soul and hard work went into this. So you're gonna get a quality uh, performance and you can definitely tell that immediately, especially with the bass region. But quite frankly, the bass is not the strongest point on this integrated amplifier. The strongest point is actually its mid-range. Now when we go to its mid-range, the mid-range is going to be a lot, lot better than um, other perhaps solid state or or integrated amplifiers in its price category, the mid-range is gonna have just a lot more space, a lot more spaciousness. So if you go to solid states, for example, sometimes you may find it's too congested. Uh, not, not congested, sorry, too, too tight, um, not enough spatial information. And then when you go to, for example, a tube amplifier, you may find that it's too scattered. Um, not, there's not enough distinction, there's not enough focus. With this, you're getting kind of a blend of both, but in a perfect way which is quite hard to do and hard to find in an integrated amplifier. But here you're gonna find that. You're gonna find that the mid-range is gonna be open and spacious with very good spatial cues and spatial information, um, very, very good information in the uh, mid-range, a lot of detail, a lot of imaging, but with a lot of space between instruments so it doesn't sound too forward or too sharp. Um, and the sound stage is gonna be open but not too scattered to to an extent where it feels like it's stretching out of the room or or you know holographic with sounds notes coming from everywhere. But but the problem with that is you don't know where it's coming from. You may like that, but the Billy amp here, what it does is it kind of focuses it down more from the tube um, tubes perspective and kind of from the solid solid state perspective a little bit more open. So it lies between the solid state. A typical solid state focused sound and a openness of a tube amplifier. So kind of like a best of both worlds. Now this was very apparent when I was listening to tracks like Hurt by Johnny Cash. I could hear breath, uh, breathiness in his voice. I could, I could hear um, there's, there's a space between him and his voice. So it's not like just his voice is so focused, um, just coming right down in, in, in front of you, but it's more like it's a, it's a casted, you know, you can hear the room a little bit more. You can hear the singer's breath a little bit more. So there's nuances that you can hear because there's added spatial information. So that is something, the impression that it gives, and it's, it's a very nice feeling, especially when you're listening to tracks that are a little bit more emotional. For example, Cry Me A River by Ella. Um, beautiful, beautiful song. I really, really love this song. In fact, I think this is one of the few tracks where um, I heard and I cried. It's a very, very emotional song for me. And this song is going to come across a lot more emotional, a lot more 
uh, easier to listen to, a lot more breathiness, a lot more, a lot more emotion added because of that spatial information. As if she's in the room, because you have that spatial information, and um, you know this is this can be achieved with a tube amplifier, but for the solid state amplifier, it's kind of hard to produce. Now this falls right in between that. So if you enjoy, you know, instruments like. Let's say I was listening to uh, Bass I Love You by Bassotronics. This has a lot of instruments, a lot of um, high frequency and low frequency all added together. So if you listen to something like that and you enjoy something like that, but at the same time you want to enjoy a lot of emotional uh, responses in female vocals and male vocals, then the Billy Amp will do just that. It's going to add a lot of character, it's going to add a lot of fun to the sound in the mid-range. With the high frequency, you're not gonna feel like it's gonna be closed down or anything like that. Uh, you're gonna actually find it to be quite open sounding. Now, it's not so open sounding that you you're gonna feel like uh, it's you know sharp or bright. In fact, you're gonna find that it's gonna be quite spacious on the top end, but it's not going to murder your ears. It's gonna be quite lenient on that kind of things. Um, it's not gonna ever become sharp. And I found this to be true with when I paired it up with clip speakers. Uh, when I paired it up with uh, Elac Velos, for example, um, speakers that are known to have a pretty a little bit more high frequency response and high frequency tilt than other speakers, when I paired it up with those kind of speakers, it kind of fared very well. In fact, it added a lot of air to the sound, so they didn't feel like it was very sharp noises. In fact, if you take a very sharp noise, um, and you kind of put add rever um, reverb to it in a studio setting, it kind of diminishes, it takes back that kind of sharpness sound. And in a way, that's what it's doing right here, is adding, I, I, it's adding a lot of spaciousness to it in the sound, and that kind of takes away all those shrill and all the, all the little um, uh, spikes that you don't want um, when you're listening. Now, I think this is very interesting because if I did not tell you that this was a class D amplifier, you would have never guessed. In fact, I would have never guessed. Um, this sounds much like a very well-designed class AB amplifier. And if I compare it with something like the Hegel H90 or the H190, I think it fares very, very well. I mean, I think it's a heck of a bargain at this price point in terms of sound quality alone. But instead, you also get, you know, headphone section, Bluetooth connectivity, phono stage, um, and, and, you know, did I mention Bluetooth? Anyways, um, I think it's very, very convenient to use because you can connect it to, you know, your YouTube without, you know, uh, going through a streamer. Because if you go through a streamer, the problem is that you can't stream YouTube. You can't stream anything else other than what is available within that streaming service, like Tidal, uh, Quobas, um, Spotify, or whatever it is. Uh, you can't play YouTube or watch movies through your streaming, you know, uh, network. Here you can do that because it's Bluetooth, and I think that's very beneficial here. And when we play YouTube, in fact, when I play poor recordings, it actually helps. This amplifier helps a lot. It adds air, like I said before, and that adding air is really, really vital when it comes to making things a little, a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more breathing room, uh, if you will. And it adds that kind of mid-range magic of a tube amplifier, in my opinion. And that is basically what this amplifier is all about. It's about making things simple, making things simple yet sound great. And I think that is what the Billy Amp is really good at. Now, what would I pair up with these speakers? Now, I would pair up literally almost any speaker out there, but if I really had to choose, I would choose something uh, like an open baffle design. Um, I tried the TriArt Open 3 speakers with this, and in fact, TriArt wanted, wanted to know what this was because one of the reps came into my place when I held, um, hooked these up to the TriArt Open 3 speakers during my review process, and he came and he was just, just absolutely blown away. He was like, that's the best we've heard our speakers. Um, what is this amplifier? And he really, really wanted to know. So I told him, uh, but regardless, it sounded incredible. The bass control, the, the synergy there was incredible. The mid-range, the bass, the impact, 
there was just so much going on with this amplifier and the Tri Open 3. There was just so much synergy. In fact, I would say that this is one of the best systems I've ever heard um, just with that combination alone. And then we have, um, you know, Elac Vela 407, which I have in for review, and also the 403 that I've tried before. It just pairs really well, even with my monitor audio Gold 50s. So anything with a, like a um, ribbon or AMT design just has a lot of openness to it, a lot of air. And then with ribbon designs or AMT designs, you get a lot of kind of like uh, really pinpoint imaging, you know, really great separation and stuff like this, while the billing app is kind of adding that air. And I think this is why it's such a great pairing. It just sounds really, really good together. So those are the uh, pairings I would go with when I choose the Billy amplifier for maximum synergistic matching. That's personally my recommendation. I would even say that it sounds really good with some of the dynamic speakers. Uh, for example, with the Bacardus 400, a lot of the complaints that I've been getting from people is that it sound, sometimes for some people it sounds too closed in, uh, too intimate. And when I paired it with the Billy amplifier as a test, I thought it really did open up the high frequency and it really did open up spaciously, not so much in terms of you know detail and sharpness, but more so in the mid-range and the high frequency, just a little bit more space, just a little bit more breathing room. Um, and that made it sound a lot, a lot more open in my opinion, a lot more spacious. And I really did enjoy that um, with the Bacardi S400. Now in terms of caveats, you're not gonna get much in terms of sound quality. In terms of sound quality, I think the only thing is that if you're someone who likes a lot of bass, if you like a lot of bass emphasis, if you like a lot of a lot of um, heavy bass, then this is not gonna exactly work in that regard. Uh, secondly, if you are someone who has uh, a speaker that is hard to drive and you need to really really drive something hard, like you need monoblocks, then this is not gonna be replacing that. Other than that, in terms of sound quality, um, it's very forgiving. It's yeah, it's very open sounding. It's really hard to go wrong with the Billy amplifier here. Uh, it just sounds really, really magical and really, really good. Now, the other caveats will really come from actually the design itself, uh, like the fact that these marks don't have an inputs and outputs, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Um, little things like that, which can be really easily fixed by, you know, if you don't mind, like tape, which I did for myself. Um, but other than that, there's really not much complaint to go around with is this integrated amplifier. I mean, if you're worried that these tubes are not gonna last, you know, for a very long time, they are. They are, you know, not output tubes, like for an amplifier that lasts, you know, like 10,000 or 1,000 hours. But this is here to last. They're gonna last a very, very long time. And if they go, then it doesn't cost a lot to replace these. In fact, you're using a ECC99 from JJ. Um, these are supposed to be like 30 bucks or something like that um, new. And you can replace them with 12BH7, I believe. They're interchangeable. If you want to you know, try out a different set of tubes, you can do that as well. Now, I haven't tested too much with tube rolling on this unit itself, um, but right off the bat, it just sounds really good, even with the JJ tubes right here. I'm sure you can improve or, you know, cater your sound a little bit to your liking by changing the tubes as well. So that's pretty much it from me, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this review really kind of covered and summarized what uh, this amp is all about. It's really about the convenience and really about the sound quality at the same time, which I think it achieves fantastically without too much compromise in my opinion. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.